Welcome back to the shop, guys. If you haven't seen part one or part two of my C5, C6 tuning videos, or if you just need a refresher, you might wanna check them out first. They're located up here in this corner, and then come back and watch this video. Now let's go ahead and jump right into it. We're finally gonna tune the C6's mass airflow sensor input using HP tuners. Toys, toys, toys. The first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and open up the current C6 tune. It's the one that we modified in the last video to adjust it for E8 fuel. And we're gonna customize this tune to make sure that the PCM is highly prioritizing the mass airflow sensor input. And at the same time, it's pretty much gonna ignore the speed density method. As we discussed in the last video, this way we can isolate the mass airflow sensor input so we can properly evaluate it and tune it. So here are the changes that I make to the tune to customize it and force it into mass airflow sensor only mode. So I'll go ahead and open up the file that we created last time where we changed it for E8 fuel. And I'll go into airflow, dynamic, and we're gonna change the high RPM, disable and re-enable. We're gonna drop them down low. So what this is, is kind of the switch point where the computer or the PCM favors the mass airflow sensor over speed density. So once we're done with that, we'll go into fuel, temperature control. We're gonna disable cat over temp. That'll stop it from adding fuel at odd times to richen the mixture up to protect the catalytic converter. Then we'll go ahead and disable the fuel cutoff upon de deceleration just by uh, raising the points of the coolant temperature and the RPM to levels that we'll never really achieve. And this will prevent the fuel from being cut off when you let off the throttle. Same thing goes for the clutch fuel cutoff for manual cars. We'll raise these up to high levels so we'll never achieve these. Therefore, fuel won't be cut off when we push in the clutch. After those changes are made, I save it with a new file number and something in the name of the file to indicate the purpose of changing the tune. Now we can go ahead and flash the MAF-only tune to the C6. And once that's done, we can go for a ride and of course, we'll be scanning with HP Tuner Scanner. Scanning for this data that we're ultimately going to be using to be making changes based upon is actually a very deliberate and careful process. And the first thing we need to do after reflashing the computer is reset those long-term fuel trims because we don't care what the old ones were. Now we need to make new ones based upon the new tune. I'm very careful to make sure I don't make any sudden and radical throttle changes and I manipulate the driving conditions to make sure that we carefully hit each of the cells within the mass airflow sensor histogram. We do this by driving on flat ground, we drive up long steep hills, sometimes we hit the brakes, sometimes we do more than one of these things. And for part throttle tuning, we're manipulating that throttle very slowly and deliberately so that we can hit all of the cells in the mass airflow sensor histogram all the way up to about 6,000 hertz. So now we have our carefully obtained mass airflow sensor only data. So what do we do with it? Now we're finally at the point where we're analyzing the long-term fuel trim air data in the mass airflow sensor histogram in HP Tuner Scanner. And then from that, we make changes to the tune which is open in HP Tuner's editor. And yes, there are two very different programs that we have open at the same time. In my case, based upon my mass airflow sensor histogram data, the long-term fuel trims are adding about 4.5% fuel all the way across the board. And that's based upon feedback, again, from the narrowband oxygen sensors to the long-term fuel trims. And that's above and beyond what's being added based upon the calibration of the mass airflow sensor in the current tune. Now it's rare that things would be this neat and evenly distributed across the mass airflow sensor histogram, but I'm gonna run with it. And in this case, all I really have to do, I've got the tune file opened up in HP Tuner's editor, and I'm simply gonna multiply all of the cells from zero to about 5,800 Hertz by 1.05. And that's gonna add about 5% more fuel to the tune. Now I am intentionally overshooting things by a little bit because as you may recall from part two, I want the long-term fuel trims to end up at zero or actually slightly negative. 
Now I simply just save the freshly modified tune with a new name. And you can guess what comes next. Yep, we flash the new tune to the C6, take it for a test drive, scan for data, and come back and analyze the new data. And if we did everything correctly, our long-term field trim should be closer to zero this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and spare you the repetition. I've repeated this cycle already two more times, but before we look at the scans, I wanna make an important point or two. First, it's incredibly important when you're doing these test drives and gathering data that you follow all of your local laws and regulations. It's not worth getting hurt or hurting somebody because you're trying to tune your car. Second, you have to make sure you've driven it a while. Everything is up to operating temperature. It's not heat soaked. It's not still cold trying to warm up. So your coolant temps have normalized and your air intake temperatures have normalized as well. If you use data that's gathered from an engine that's too cold or an engine that's heat soaked, it's garbage data and it'll lead to a garbage tune. Here's the next test drive scan and I've clicked the little C button for count. Each one of these now, like in the thousands, is the number of cell hits that I got for each one of these cell boxes, which you want to have it to be several hundred or higher to make sure you've got good, accurate data. Now I'll go ahead and hit the average button, and this gets me the long-term field trim data. And you can see it's still adding about 1.5% on average fuel across the board. And this is consistent enough where I'm just going to modify the tune by adding 2% and then we'll do this all over again with another test drive and scan. We're back and this is looking about exactly where I want it. Remember we're shooting for slightly negative and these are all somewhere on negative a half or so. There's always going to be a little variance but when I see numbers like this this is exactly what I want. So this looks good. So now all I have to do is take that tune that we forced into math only and convert it back so it'll take the inputs from both the math sensor and speed density. So we just essentially reverse everything we did on the front end when we change these parameters to force it to only look at the mass airflow sensor. Guys, be sure to come back for the next video, part four, where we're going to shut off essentially with a tweak of a tune, the mass airflow sensor side so we can isolate the speed density side and go ahead and tune that. It is a little bit more involved than tuning the math, but it's doable and it's extremely important to making sure you get this right. Guys, since you made it this far, hit that like button so YouTube knows to share this video. But most of all, thanks for watching.